What's up, y'all? Y'all know y'all gotta look at my mother shirt. Look at this. And we got some action on the back. It say, expand your mind. I love it. So I got a DM on Instagram. I'm wondering if you have any tips on how to bounce back essentially from having a bad trip. Like, you know, what do you recommend that people do after having a turbulent trip if they decide that they want to continue to do shrooms? How would you suggest that they reintegrate and, you know, move forward? So this video is gonna be, I had a bad trip, but I wanna move on from it. Numero uno on the list. If you had a bad trip, I need you to define that. What is bad? Why are you describing it as a bad trip? Were there things that you just didn't like? Was it the fact that your mind was on a loop? Did you not like that you couldn't turn it off? Did you just think about things that just put you in a headspace? Did you become emotional? Did you cry? Did you face things that you weren't ready to face? Were you feeling a certain way about a lot of stuff that you had just been repressing and pinning down and not speaking on or addressing. I honestly feel like a lot of times people have bad trips either because of set and setting or because they just were not ready for where the shrooms took them. I tell y'all all the time, shrooms take you to the front door of your problems and if you're not ready to address that, you shouldn't be doing shrooms. Also too, not too long ago, I had somebody call me and they was like, I'm coming down off my shrooms and I'm just really fucked up. And I'm like, what do you mean? I just, I'm like in my feelings. Like, I don't like this, and da, 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 da. Like, they just went on this whole thing about how they was feeling, you know, all the stuff that was going through their mind and shit like that. And I literally, when they was done, I said, have you been suppressing how you feel? Have you been feeling like this for a long time? And they was like, yeah. I'm like, right. And you've been suppressing it, right? Yeah. I don't really talk to nobody about it. If there are things that you're suppressing and you're not talking to nobody about it, you need to figure out what works best for you as far as still getting that out and dealing with it in a way that is productive for you, but in a way that gives you that sense of calm and silence and security and comfort to unpack that. Now, this is one thing that I will say. I did encourage them to get a journal, and this is why. A journal is a very private space, but it's a space where you could just be brutally fucking honest and you don't have to worry about like what other people gonna think about you. So when I was a kid and I had a journal, I would write shit in there like, this fat motherfucker get on my nerves. They always asking for seconds on, on my shit. They eat they shit and come ask for mine. This person pissed me off today. And I might've felt like that on July 23rd, but come September the 4th, I'm gonna be like, I don't even feel that way about that person anymore. Hmm. Yeah, that one time you didn't piss me off. Hmm. But I think the biggest part of this is that when you have a bad trip, you gotta be honest with yourself. If your mind go on the loop, what is your mind on the loop about? What are you suppressing? And then also too, once you identify that, what do you want? How do you want to rectify this? How do you want it to be better? How do you want it to be different? And then also too, are you willing to put in the work in order for it to be different? She was just reflecting on a relationship that she had with a family member and how she don't like that it's where it is. And I had to ask her like, okay, how did you contribute to that? And then also too, a big part of some of the things that go on in our mind when our mind is on a loop one we tell ourselves lies that are not true and we act on those lies as if they are true when those lies are actually just thoughts that we gave power to two just because things are happening to you or to other people who are around you it is not your responsibility to help carry weight that does not belong to you we have to get into a state of conditioning our mind to realize that hey this is not my burden to carry and me helping somebody else carry their burden is not going to teach them how to process that or how to deal with that. Some things they need to do alone. Yes, I will be there to support you, but I can't carry it for you. We are trying to be so helpful and so understanding of other people that we put a shit on ourselves that's not even our shit. Meanwhile, that other person, they don't want to skip the fuck on because they ain't dealing with their shit no more. Because you done helped them out so much and now they're on your conscience. Your mind is spinning on their behalf. No. No. Right, so in having that conversation with her, you know, those were just some of the reassuring things that we talked about because a lot of what I heard was guilt. She felt guilty for how things turned out, but those things that she was feeling guilt about was not her responsibility. Define what you think is bad. I always recommend that you keep a journal. It's a good way for you to get out how you feel, come up with a plan to address the things that you feel. Okay, I wrote down these five things that's fucking me up. What can I do about these five things? Even if it's something small, okay, 
If my issue is that I don't like my weight, I'm gonna write five steps to how I could do it. I could start exercising. I could start cutting things out of my diet. I could wake up earlier to make sure that I'm eating more meals a day so that my metabolism has the opportunity to speed up. I could stop drinking pop and I could drink more water. Let's say today I ate fucking 2 dollars bag of chips. Ate the whole thing. And then I wake up today and I decide, you know what? I wanna be different. Today I'm only gonna eat a dollar bag of chips. And even though that's still eating chips and I should stop eating chips altogether, it's still progress because I didn't eat that $2 bag. I ate a $1 bag, which means it's small. And the next day I might be like, you know what? I'm cool. I don't want no chips. And then it might be a, a whole week that go by and I'd be like, damn, I ain't no chips in a week. But then I get a taste for them. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go get a 50 cent bag. That's the smallest bag they got. I'm only gonna get one. When that bag is gone, that's it. Now they made progress. I'm addressing this problem. I can go look back at my journal like, damn, three weeks ago, I was eating $2 bags of chips three times a week. Now I don't win a whole week and I only ate one small bag of chips. Again, that's what would work for me. I don't know that that would work for everybody else, but if it worked for me, it might work for y'all, so try it. You never know. So outside of being real with yourself about how you feel and recognizing that everything you hold on to may not be yours, I think also it's important to understand that if you're willing to move on from something, you have to give it another chance. How much did you take when you had this bad trip? What was your state of mind when you had this bad trip? Was it an overstimulation? Was it too much? Did you not like it because you just couldn't turn it off? Some things as they pertain to time, when a lot of people tell me about a bad trip, I hear that a lot. I couldn't turn it off. I was tired of feeling like that. I wanted to throw it up and get it over with. That still didn't work. You have to understand too though, when I hear people say shit like that, the first thing that comes to my mind is, they wanna be in control. Life is not one of them things where you're always in control. So if control is an issue for you, that's gonna dictate the things you do and the things you participate in. So some people who have a control issue, they like weed. Cause they know like, I'm gonna be high for a little bit and I'm come down and be cool. They like to drink. Cause if I'm too drunk, I'm either gonna throw up or eat something to get to sober up. I'm cool, I can be in control. Shrooms is one of them things where you're not gonna always be in control. Your subconscious is what's gonna be in control. What's deep down inside is gonna be in control. Address your shit. I've had a lot of people ask me like, you ain't never had a bad trip to say I had a bad trip. No, no. I've had times where I just felt like I was too high. I didn't necessarily like where my mind went, but was that a bad trip? No, because afterwards I felt like an emotional purge happened and I was good. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes people just need a bad, you probably sometimes you need an experience that's not what you want it to be so that you could get to where you gotta be. Life got a crazy way of, if you don't move when you are supposed to move, life gonna move your ass. And if life move your ass by you doing shrooms, Hey, big dog, <laughs> you need that reset. You need that readjustment. And then another thing, too, when people tell me that they had a bad trip, it's like, nah, I don't want to do that again because I don't know what the fuck going to happen right. And when people tell me that, the first thing that I hear is, I got shit that I need to address that I'm not addressing, and that shit probably going to come up, and I'm cool. Why you running from it? The sooner you knock on the front door of your own bullshit, the faster you're going to be in a better space. So you either going to prolong your progress or you going to knock on the door and be like, look, big dog, we finna do this today. And the last two things, I'm gonna give y'all is this one grant yourself some grace a lot of times we are our toughest critic grant yourself some grace you're learning you're growing you're changing if you're ready to be a different person you want to try some new shit you want to get into new shit you gotta let go of old shit if you're having a hard time addressing your shit I always recommend therapy find a close friend that you could talk to that you really trust that you could just comb through your emotions with un Unfiltered. Unfiltered. If you got a question if a person is going to judge you or if they going to think of you differently or whatever the case may be, they ain't it. They ain't it, you know? I think that if you are hard on yourself, grant yourself some grace. Grant yourself some patience. You only get one self. You got to be nice to it. And last but certainly not least, if you're one of those people who had a bad trip, I want you to answer this. What would have made your trip better? What did you not like and what would have made it better? And if you're gonna choose to still try to be on a journey and integrate shrooms into your life journey, I think you need to comb through that what would have made it better list and start with that so that that can determine if you're gonna do it again. Okay, I didn't like my setting that I was in. I was It was too much for me. Okay, so now if I decide that I wanna do shrooms, maybe I'll just do it with you know a small circle or me and one friend and we can go for a walk, we can go outside. I never did shrooms when it was nice outside. Maybe I should go do shrooms and sit by some water and just, you know, relax and listen to some good music or, you know, maybe I should be with some fresh air and, you know, switch it up. What headspace was you in the last time? You know, would you have been in a better headspace and make a difference? Were you dealing with a lot? What kind of weight did you have on your shoulders? What would have made it better? And once you address those things and you decide, you know what, I'm going to try it again. And if you try it again, you like, okay, this was better than last time, but how can I make it even better? 
okay. I'm figuring my, I'm finding my footing with this. Okay, so if you have had a bad trip, I'm sorry that you had a bad trip. I hope that this video gives you the courage and encouragement to just sit and process and understand and figure out what was bad, what you liked, what you didn't like, and moving forward, if you choose to do it again, how are you gonna do things different? I also recommend that you guys get a journal because it's also another way for you to track your growth, track your journey, and to be able to look back and say, I'm a different person than I was when I wrote this. And I'm happy about that. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Comments, like, and subscribe. And I will catch y'all on the flip side. Peace out!